Okay, well, welcome, Linda. We're just getting things getting ready to get kicked off here, so your timing is great. So, um, well, first and foremost, welcome everybody to another Tuesday live training here at the One Source Personal Development Network. Um, have a lot of information to cover today because um, what I've done is I have last week's presentation that obviously we didn't do, and I've added a couple things to it because I had more time. So I'd want to make sure we have enough time to get through everything. So um, I'm going to be kind of moving at a faster pace maybe than normal. But what are we going to talk about today? Today, I want to focus more in depth on the six basic human needs. Okay, I know we've talked about this before, but there's a lot to it. Um, and we never really covered in depth as much as, um, as I'd like to. Because it's very relevant when you, not only for your own personal development, but specifically when you're working with clients and prospects. Because the more you get to know an individual and you can identify which of the six basic needs that they value the most, it can be very powerful as far as trying to identify why they're doing what they're doing and equally important why they're not doing what they should be doing. So I want to get into it a little bit deeper today. And um, I also I also want to talk about basically something that really became, I suppose, uh, I became very aware of over the last week or so. Uh, I've always been aware of it, obviously, but it's really nice now to see how things are kind of uh, um, evolving as far as like the friends that we meet along the way that, you know, help us to really appreciate the journey that we're on here. I know you guys have, have made some really good friends here in the network and, and that's amazing to me. I'd love to see that. I'd love to hear the stories and I'd love to see the interaction, uh, but you know, between the group and, and the different consultants and joint venture partners. Um, I, myself, I, I think the world of everybody here I've made some really good friends with some clients uh, that I value very strongly. And last week, I got the opportunity to spend some time with some of them, uh, which was really nice face to face. But what really made me aware of it is I'm in the middle of a book now, uh, Ray Dalio wrote called Principles. And I'll pre-warn everybody, it's, the book's not going to be for everybody. It's a lot to do with investing. If you know anything about Ray Dalio, he's uh, one of the most successful hedge fund uh, managers um, in the world, multi-billionaire. Um, but he talks about his journey um, of where he started, but he talks about principles of investing, but he also talks about life principles as well. But he said something that was very relevant to me. All the money that he's made, you know, the billions and billions of dollars, he said in his own words is that it, it doesn't equal what he values from the friendships that he's made along the way and the contacts that he's built along the way. And I think that's very true. I think it's very true specifically here in our business here. Like I was saying that, you know, last week I was over in London and yeah, I was there for, um, I was there for business with Generation but I stayed an extra day and a half and I met up with some people. Uh, I went out to dinner. You'll remember James. James is the individual who um, presented to us um, as far as on the wealth building. Uh, phenomenal guy. But it was great. I got to meet actually James. We went out. We went to a Vietnamese restaurant. We had an amazing uh, dinner. Uh, the other individual in the picture with us is another one of my clients, a gentleman by the name of Hayden. And Hayden, I'm going to get to come in and present to us as well. Hayden is a very impressive guy. He's um, a few years younger than, than James, but he's, uh, he's on his way to becoming financially free as well. Uh, he, he's involved in a few different businesses. He owns a bunch of property in, in, in London as well. Um, he's not quite retired yet, but I'd say over the next two to three years, he will be. But uh, he's really involved in anything to do with the science of personal development any new technology, any strategies, um, any new tools that are be, uh, being introduced, any books that are being written uh, in a big way. I've been working with, with Hayden now. I don't think it's quite a year, but it's probably about 10, 11 months at this stage. 
but a phenomenal guy. So I got to go out and, and meet with him. And it was great because I, 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 I look at these guys as friends of mine and I know their clients, but I really appreciate, you know, the, the interaction with them. And when I have sessions with them, I learn a lot. Um, I know I'm the one who's actually, you know, getting paid and I'm the one who's actually doing the consulting, but trust me, I, I learned as much from these guys as they learned from me. Uh, so it's really great to have that. In addition, while I was over there, I met this guy. Um, I'm going to have Mike come and do a presentation and a training for us as well. Uh, Mike is, uh, he, he's a client I've been working with for about four or five months now. He's, um, I would have shown you, I believe, um, a clip of his before. He's a, a personal trainer and his brand is, is actually Mike Lee PT. So if you go to Mike Lee, uh, Lee PT .com, uh, that's his brand. He's, um, he trains world-class athletes primarily. He's um, very, very successful personal trainer. He's, uh, he's not only does he train world-class athletes, but he's involved in um, a podcast where he coaches coaches that has over 100,000 subscribers. Um, just, just an amazing young guy. And it was great. I, I met up with Mike. We, um, we were able to go out to lunch together, um, had a great time. Um, in addition to that, he was going to South Africa the same day uh, that I was leaving. So when I got, when I get to the airport, I get a text um, from, uh, from Mike and he says, are you in terminal five? I was in Heathrow airport. And um, he, I said, yeah, I'm in terminal five. He's like, yeah, I just came through security. So I thought that's amazing. I told him where, you know, where I was at. He was with, he was with his girlfriend and uh, he was going over one of his um, athletes are competing in an event over in, in South Africa. He was going over there. Uh, so, but I met up with him again for dinner, him and his girlfriend, which was, it was fantastic. You know, we, we were at the airport, but again, it's great to make these, these contacts and these relationships. And it's there for you guys as well. I know you've already made some really good contacts here, but as you progress in your business, you know, that's the nice thing about what we do because we're not, I, I don't know what the lines are with you know, with life coaching, what the, what, what the proper procedures are as far as building relationships with people. But I look at it as far as, as a consultant, you know, I share a lot of, you know, who I am, a lot of my background. I have no problem opening up to people and they open up to me. Um, you know, it's, it's not a form of therapy or anything like that. It's a consultative approach. So you do have the opportunity to build these relationships and hopefully long-term relationships. And one more individual who I wanted to um, introduce you to, at some point in time, I'm going to get Adam to come in and present to us, hopefully, hopefully as well, uh, more on social media marketing. But Adam is a, is, is a client of mine over there that uh, I didn't get the opportunity to meet with because our schedules just didn't line up uh, while, I, while I was over there. But he says, what I'm going to do is I want to send you over a testimonial for you to put on the website. But again, Adam, really impressive young guy. He's the marketing director for One Rebel UK. I don't know if you guys know what, who One Rebel is or not, but they're a, um, they're a global, um, uh, I, I, I suppose, fitness center, but they're very unique. Um, I won't get into the details of what, about the way they operate, but they're a very impressive organization. And he's a very impressive young man, but he looks after, he's got a team of 10 people uh, working underneath them. And he does all their social media and all their marketing for one rebel. Uh, but again, I, I got a really good relationship, but I consider him a good friend of mine as well. But again, these are just all the things that, you know, I just want to kind of throw in there because it's nice when you sit back and think about it. Yeah, I mean, it's great to have a business. You can work for yourself. You can travel. You can work from anywhere. You can make money. But I think we kind of lose sight of the fact that you, you can meet some really amazing people and build, you know, you know, connections and friendships that, you know, lifelong friendships, hopefully, you know, along the way. And obviously within the group here, but also with the, with the clients that you're working with. So getting back to our six basic human needs. Now, everyone experiences the same, uh, same six human needs. You've heard me say that many times before. You know, however, everyone finds different ways of satisfying 
these needs. Again, nothing new. We've all talked, we've talked about this before. You know, each of these needs can be met in ways that are either positive or negative. If you remember when we talk about in the science uh, of uh, behind the system, that's exactly what we talked about, the, the vehicle that you choose to meet those needs. Though some ways of satisfying these needs are good for the person, good for others, and good for society, and some are bad for everyone. So again, it all comes down to the vehicles that you're choosing. And that's really relevant to what we're going to talk about here. Because again, what's happening is if you're not producing the results you want for yourself or your clients aren't producing the results that they want for themselves, it's simply because they're trying to meet a need and they're choosing the wrong vehicle to meet those needs. So you have to become very aware of what these six basic needs are and you need to make sure that you get a very clear understanding from your interaction with your client and your own evaluation on your own actions, which ones you value most. Because if you could really learn the top two to three things that you value mo most of these six basic needs or you know that your, your clients value most, well, you can identify very quickly why certain behaviors uh, are being repeated over and over and over again and why you're avoiding doing certain things over and over and over again. It's because you're trying to meet a need, but you're just going about the wrong way. You're, you're, you're not doing it in a positive way. So now that I'm almost about 10 minutes into it, I'm did I, I did hit the record button. Sorry about that. I didn't see the light flash in there. I was wondering if I recorded or not. So apologies for that, guys. Um, I'll have to edit that bit out. But anyway, uh, this individual, Chloe, um, I don't know if you're familiar with her or not. I heard her talk at a Tony Robbins event before. She wrote a book with Tony Robbins. Um, she's written a, cu a couple books. She's uh, an expert specifically around the six basic human needs. I'm going to talk more about her at the end, but uh, she's got a couple really relevant books that I'm going to recommend. One, I know I have. I've, I've listened to it. I have it on an audio. The second, I have to admit, I haven't listened to yet, uh, but I have to assume it's pretty good because I know the first one was phenomenal. So what are these six basic human needs? Well, we're going to fly through them quickly because what I want to do is I, I want to get um, a little bit deeper into each one. But we, we all know we have that need for certainty. You know, basically the need for certainty is all about know, knowing that the action you're taking, that you're going to avoid pain and hopefully, hopefully gain some pleasure uh, or at least be comfortable, uh, as Tony Robbins says. Uh, the need for uncertainty, uncertainty of variety. Basically, that's just the need to know that um, the need for the unknown, you know, a, a change, some type of variety, a new stim, uh, stimuli, as they say. Um, I'm going to explain that one in a lot more detail because that's one that people kind of struggle with. They don't really understand. Um, significance. We've talked about this, but this is so relevant uh, when you're trying to look at what behavior people are doing, why they're doing what they're doing. So many times people have that need for significant that we all do, but if they value it very high, they choose the wrong vehicle by bullying people, arguing with people, uh, bragging too much, uh, tearing other people down. It's just a way that they're meeting that need. They're picking a bad, uh, they're making a bad choice, a negative vehicle. And when you can identify that and you can identify that the reason they're doing it well, then you can kind of direct them and direct yourself to make it a, a more of a positive choice. Again, we all know we all have that need for connection and love, um, basically to desire to build loving, lasting, meaningful relationships with other individuals. Um, growth, um, the expansion, I look at it more as evolving. You know, we all have a need to grow and become more. We all have a need to evolve. This is an internal need that we all have, um, and contribution. Um, when it comes to contribution, 
my feelings are that basically the reason we even grow is so we have more to give. But we're going to take a look at a little bit more deeper at each one. But what I would like you to do along the way, really try to, when you're evaluating these needs, try to make a determination, which ones do you value the most? Because we all have them. The only difference between you and me and anybody else is the level that you value that particular need. And that's going to be different for everybody because it's all going to come down to what you've been conditioned with, what primarily, um, you know, events that have happened in your life and the emotions that you've attached to them. So that's what's going to basically determine, you know, if certainty is your number one need that you need or if significance is your number one need um, or growth. And a lot of times the needs kind of go hand in hand. Like a lot of times you'll see somebody with a very strong uh, need for significance and the next one will be growth. And I'll, I'll tell you that because I know that's me personally. I have a need for, you know, a strong need for significance and I know where it comes from. It comes from my background, my childhood and all these other things that have happened throughout my lifetime. And it's not a negative thing. Uh, the, the only difference would be is if I choose the wrong vehicle. But I also have a very strong need for growth. And the reason I have that need for growth is because it feeds my need for significance. Because the more I grow, the more significant I feel. Uh, but that's a positive vehicle. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why I love personal development. And that's why I love what I do here. And again, it's not in an egotistical or you know, conceited type of way. Uh, but again, for me, I know two of my, my biggest ones would be significance would probably be number one, growth would be number two, contribution would probably be number three. Um, but again, they all kind of interconnect because I know that significance is number one. I need to grow. That makes me feel more significant. And when I grow, I can contribute more which in turn makes me feel more significant. Uh, but again, when you, you get to really comfortable with these things, you can see it with yourself. And equally important, you could see it with the clients you're working with. So the need for certainty, number one. Basically, we know about pain and pleasure. We all have you know, a need to avoid pain and to gain some sort of pleasure or comfort. Well, that's all that need for certainty is. We have a need that if we do certain things, it's gonna produce certain results, security, um, that it's, it's, it's going to produce, uh, produce some type of comfort, whatever the case may be. But the driving force behind it is, we need to be certain that what we're doing is going to basically avoid pain and hopefully give us some sort of pleasure or at least be comfortable, as Tony Robbins says. So that's, and again, these are all internal needs that we have. So if you're working with somebody and say, for an example, security is a real big thing with them. Well, you know, that's, I mean, that's, that's fine. They have a very strong need for certainty because primarily what's happening is they, if they're not secure, and they don't know what's going to happen from day to day, if they're not certain, well, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to be very uncomfortable and it's going to be painful for them. The need for certainty um, is in all of us. But again, because of different events that have happened in our life, some value it higher than others. Now, when it comes to uh, the pain and pleasure and certainty, you would like to think that primarily a person will do more to gain pleasure than avoid pain. But in reality, a person will always, if you're being put in a situation where you have to make a choice, you will always do more, or most people, I should say, will always do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. Okay? So, but the thing is, you can get leverage on yourself, and we've talked about this before, but you can do that by asking yourself questions and evaluate, evaluating the situation and, and challenging um, 
the, those uh, decisions that you're making, those beliefs. But how do we create certainty in these, these current times that we're living in? We're living in very uncertain times between the pandemic, um, you know, with the, the rising cost of, you know, you know, everything from diesel to food to, you know, uh, travel to, you know, literally everything. You know, the, the rate of inflation now is getting scary, but we're living in very uncertain times. So how do we create a level of certainty for somebody who that's what they crave? You know, that's what they value above all else, certainty in uncertain times. Well, if you, if you look at the root, what's another word for certainty? Certainty is just a belief. You have a belief that primarily things are going to be okay. Things are good. You're going to be able to avoid that pain. You're going to be able to get some level of comfort, whatever the situation may be. But certainty in, is just another word for belief. And when, when we talk about belief, if you remember, how do we basically develop a belief? You'll remember when we were looking at uh, session number three in our training, how to, how to use your, you know, your definite major purpose, you know, your, your purpose statement when we develop that. Well, that was the first, one of the first things we, we talked about was you have to have a belief. Because remember, when you're doing the power of repetition and you're mixing in emotion, you're doing that to basically build a belief. Because once you believe that you can do something, your subconscious mind is going to take it in. It's going to absorb it in such a way that it's going to start working for you 24-7. But that all comes from certainty or belief. So if you remember the way that I recommend um, in our system, the way that we develop basically belief is, well, we, we have a three-step process. And what we do is First, you decide exactly what you want. What are you trying to believe? What is the belief that you're trying to instill into yourself to create that level of certainty? Then you have to identify why do you want it? Um, there you go. You know, what, you know, why do you want it? So you identify what is the belief that you're trying to basically develop to instill in yourself and why do you want it? And then you're going to figure out how you're going to get it. And then when you're going to do that, you're going to condense it into a statement. And this works the exact same as your purpose statement. You can do this to develop belief in literally anything. It doesn't just have to be around your definite major purpose or your purpose statement. If you want to develop a, a belief that you can be successful in this business, if you want to develop a belief that you can go ahead and learn some skill that you're looking to do, Get that dream relationship that you're looking for. Whatever the case that either you or your client are looking to develop, you can do it with this three-step process. You can then you're just gonna, once you decide what you want, why you want it, and you're gonna come up with a plan how you're gonna get it, all you're gonna do is condense that into a statement. And what are you gonna do? The power of repetition, same thing as you did with your purpose statement. Say it over and over and over. First thing in the morning, last thing at night, you say it out loud, you say it with emotion and you say it with intensity. You do it enough times, eventually what's gonna happen, you're gonna develop a belief that you can achieve it. The subconscious mind is going to go ahead and it's gonna absorb it. It's gonna take root. Next thing you know, 24, seven, seven days a week, your subconscious mind is working with you instead of against you because it knows what you want. It knows why you want it. It's helped you develop a plan and it's gonna work on that plan and come up with no, new ways of achieving the result you're looking for. So, you know, as far as where beliefs come from, well, your beliefs come from primarily as far as, you know, your knowledge, but we can, we can increase our knowledge. You know, if you have a limited source of knowledge right now and, you know, to develop the belief, if your belief isn't strong enough, Increase your level of knowledge, your environment. Well, you can improve your environment. You can improve your environment at any time. You don't have to move from where you're living. 
but you can go ahead and surround yourself with better people. You can, you know, read better books. You can listen to better audio tapes. You can watch, you know, more powerful, enriching, you know, tutorials on YouTube or whatever the case may be. Your future vision. Again, your future vision is up to you. You can develop that. You can go ahead and you can develop your definite major purpose in such a way like I, we were just talking about a moment ago in such a way that you're basically you're increasing your vision, you're improving it, you're, in, you're, you're making it stronger. You know, as far as the past results, well, the past results you can't change, but what can you change? The meaning that you associate to those past results. Like if you failed at something before, you can't change the fact that you failed, but you could say, yes, I, I failed before, but guess what? Now I've learned. Now I'm, I'm stronger than I ever was again. Now I know what not to do. So you can change the association to those past results. And then the current events. Well, the current events you have complete control over as far as primarily you can produce the results in your mind ahead of time. You can go ahead and do it in such a way by using your purpose statement that you're basically instilling your, your, your and enforcing, you know, and in increasing your level of belief. So it's just like what we talked about before with the success, uh, success cycle. The success cycle is primarily we all have unlimited potential, but, but, and it's a big but, depending on your level of belief how much potential you have is, is not going to be the same. You're not going to have unlimited potential because chances are you don't believe you have really unlimited potential. But depending on how much potential you believe you have, well, that's going to dictate the action you're going to take. The action you take is going to produce a result. That result is going to primarily, it's going to reinforce your, your, your belief or your attitude which again is going to determine what you believe your potential is, that your action result, it's a vicious circle. But if you can increase that level of belief, that's where it all starts, that level of certainty, that's going to go ahead and make you believe you have more potential. You're going to take a, you know, a stronger action, which is going to basically produce a, a better result, which is going to reinstill you know, your, your belief or your attitude which is going to give you a stronger belief, which is going to go make you believe you have more potential, stronger action, so on and so forth. So we really do have complete control over this. It's just a matter of how we actually look at it. Um, sorry, not moving. There we go. So that's number one. So we understand the level of certainty. Number two, uncertainty or variety. It's a lot of people get confused with this one. They understand, yeah, we have a need for variety because we don't want to be bored. But if we have a need for certainty, why do we have a need for uncertainty? And in addition to variety from being bored, there's a very logical reason why each and every one of us have that internal need for uncertainty. If you look at it, certainty, you have a need for, like I say, security, safety, you know, you know, you know, knowing that if you do certain things, it's going to produce certain results. Uncertainty can be a little bit fearful, a little bit painful, even, you know, maybe you have a bit of anxiety, worry, doubt, you know, it could be dangerous, you know, fight or flight uh, type of thing. But somewhere in the middle, between certainty and uncertainty, basically that's where growth comes from. Because see, if we don't have that level, if we didn't, if we didn't have the need for uncertainty, we would never take a risk. We would never take a chance. We would never step outside of our comfort zone. And if we don't step out of our comfort zone, if we don't take a risk, if we don't take a chance, you're not gonna grow. You're not going to discover, you're not going to, you know, discover new ways of basically being certain, producing new results that you can, in the future, you can be certain that if you take these actions, it's going to basically avoid pain and it's going to produce some form of pleasure or level of comfort for you. 
Because again, if all we ever did was what we were certain was going to avoid pain, well, we'd be very limited. But if we want to grow and become more, well, we have to have, a, have that level of uncertainty instilled into us. That's what makes, that's what makes us um, strive to become more. You know, Ray Dalio, you heard me talk about, uh, you know, his principle, his book on principles. And it really is a great book. Uh, but again, I just say it's not for everybody because I know a lot of people aren't into investing and things like that. And there is an awful lot about investing in there. Um, but he's, he goes on to say it, it's a fundamental law of nature that in order to gain strength, one has to push one's limits, which is going to be painful. I think most people understand that. You know, we all have to kind of push through uncomfortable um, times to come out the other side stronger. But that all comes from the need of, of uncertainty. You know, a bit of variety, but even though it could be painful, we take that risk, we take that chance, and we push through. Because we, you can even go on to tie it in the level of certainty as far as we have a belief that if we could push through, we're going to come out the other side stronger, even though it might not always work out that way. But because we have that need for uncertainty, you, you're going to go ahead and you're, you are going to push through. Um, but again, if you don't value uncertainty enough, you're not going to be a risk taker. You're not going to push yourself. And you might have a comfortable life, but you're only living to up. Uh, you, you'll never reach your full potential because you're never going to push yourself. You're never going to go ahead and step out of your comfort zone, which is always going to be required. The people who you'll see stepping out of their comfort zone all the time, those are people that have, they value uncertainty. It's one of their top values. As far as the six needs, they value it above the others. They have a need, a, a very strong need for uncertainty. And you'll see those are the risk takers. Those are the people that are always stepping out. Those are the people that take chances. And oftentimes they're the ones who become the most successful. Um, but when you were talking about stepping out of the comfort zone, it's important to understand that we have to step out of the comfort zone in all the areas of our life. You have to step out of your comfort zone if you want to have better relationships. You have to try new things. You have to meet new people. You have to, you know, you know, get involved in, in, in different situations. You know, you have to step out of your comfort zone as far as on your health. Um, if, if, if you want to get fit, maybe you have to sign up for the gym and maybe it's not very comfortable. You don't like to have to go and get into, you know, your outfit and go walk into a room full of strangers and start to work out and get on the treadmill or work out on the weights or whatever the case may be. Um, you have to do some things that maybe, you know, you're just not comfortable doing. Um, you, you know, same with personal growth. If you want to learn a new skill, if you want to do something, if you want to become better, if you want to go ahead and achieve more, if you want to grow, well, you're not going to grow by staying where you are. You're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. Again, all comes from basically how much you value that need for uncertainty. Same thing with the finances. So you may have to take some risks. You may have to do some things you're not 100% comfortable with. But if you see somebody, including yourself, struggling in any of these areas, I would go ahead and, and try to come up with some ways that they could step out of their comfort zone, try new things, try to start associating some pleasure to that need for uncertainty, try to inspire them to actually do some things that are going to make them value that at a higher level. And if you can learn to value that at a higher level, that need for uncertainty, I can guarantee you, you'll become much more comfortable stepping out of that zone. And the more you step out of your comfort zone, the more risk you take, the more things you do, the more successful ultimately you'll be in all the areas of your life. You know, until you're, you know, each area is exactly where you want it to be. Um, this is the books that I was talking about. Re Relationship Breakthrough, really, really good. That book I have, I have it on audio. Um, I heard her talk about it at a seminar with uh, Tony Robbins. 
the secret meaning of money, I don't, I have not done yet, I must admit, but I have no doubt that it's phenomenal. Um, but again, the thing about her is that she, not only does she work with Tony uh, at a very high level, she, like I say, Tony Robbins had actually authored the book with her. Um, she's uh, basically an expert in the six basic human needs. And she talks about how it affects what your relationships and things you can do within the relationships to break through, you know, by identifying those six basic human needs and how you value each one of them. Um, what about significance? We've all talked about that need for significance. I've already said to you, my need for significance, I know that's one of the things I value most of myself. And it's not a negative thing. I know it can sound very negative where you say, oh, you know, he's, he's all about significance. It's, it's just to do with, you know, my conditioning. Anybody who has a high need for significance, it all comes from your conditioning. Um, myself, basically, I'll tell you very, I, I would have told you before, I had a tough enough upbringing um, where I really started to excel is when I got into uh, sales and when I got into um, different situations where I would have to do, you know, pers I would have to persuade someone to go ahead and maybe make a purchase or make a decision. I did pretty well with that. And when I would do that because of sales environment, well, you're always ranked and you're competing against other salespeople. And it was the first time in my life that I really felt I excelled at anything. I would go into, I was working with large groups of people and I would always be one of the top salespeople month in, month out. And again, I got that feeling of significance and it felt amazing to me because I had never had it before. And again, because I, I associate then a lot of pleasure, but fortunately for me, I, that was a very positive vehicle. I chose to meet that need. And as that need built, I've always just chosen vehicles that were really, and, and it wasn't consciously, I was just very fortunate in that situation. Um, that, to meet that need for significance, I found a very positive way of doing it. Where other people, well, primarily what they do is they they do it in a very conceited or, you know, they build, maybe build up an ego, but that's not that's really not what it's about. Most people, when they're trying to meet that need for significance, unfortunately, unfortunately, most people, they basically, they, they get confused. And, you know, they, they get a lot, they start to feel like a level of self-importance, like they're better than, or they start to, um, you know, pick bad vehicles as far as, you know, ways that are, you know, to meet the need that are either destructive instead of productive. I was fortunate enough. Um, and again, I don't, I don't believe it was ever a conscious decision. It's just the way that my life went. Uh, I found a very positive vehicle to go ahead and to meet that need. But how do others meet that need? We talk about, you know, the need for significance. And it, this, is, this holds true with everything. Like we said at the very beginning, it's just how we meet those needs. And it doesn't matter if it's the need for certainty, a need for uh, uncertainty, a need for uh, significance, love and connection, uh, growth or contribution. It doesn't make a difference. We can always choose a positive or negative vehicle. But when it comes to significance, some people choose some really, really bad vehicles. You know, what they'll do is, you know, they'll bully other people, tear other people down. You know, why? You know, why do, you know, people do these things? Well, you can analyze it any way you want, but it comes down to one simple thing. When somebody is bullying another person, it's because they have a high need for significance and they've chosen the wrong vehicle to go ahead to meet that need. You know, as, as the saying goes, there's two ways to have the, uh, the tallest building in town. You can either build the tallest building or you can tear down every other building that's taller than yours. And that's what a lot of people do. They go and they bully and they tear down other people. You wanna be very cautious of that, obviously. Um, but again, you also wanna be you don't, you don't want to be too hard on people when they're bullying because you understand they're, they're not doing it because they're a horrible person. They're doing it because they've been conditioned that they have this need 
and they stumbled away of meeting that need by bullying others. They probably didn't even do it consciously, but they did it and it felt good. It made them feel better. It felt their need for significance. And then they just kind of stick with it. And that, that's what happens. It creates a very vicious cycle. But again, you can be very aware of that within yourself and, that, and with others. Um, you know, we all have choices to make. Once you become aware of it, especially, like I say, in my early uh, years, I didn't realize why, you know, I enjoyed sales so much. I do now. And I was very lucky to find that vehicle. But same thing would, have, would hold true for any other area as well if I would have chosen a negative vehicle. But now that you're aware, you have choices to make. You have to analyze when you're doing certain things to meet a need. You have to evaluate the actions you're taking and make a choice. Make a choice of a vehicle that you're going to use to meet that need. Um, you know, again, bullying, you know, are you, are you bragging? Do you know somebody who brags all the time? always constantly patting himself on the back why do you think they do that they do that primarily because they're trying to meet that need for significance you know if if somebody's just making fun of other people all the time you know kind of putting people down they're doing it primarily because they're trying to meet that need for significance definitely being a bully but once you identify it well what vehicles could you use to meet that need could you feel significant primarily by excelling in your uh, in your job? Could you feel like um, by learning new things and, and becoming, you know, brighter and more educated? Those are all positive vehicles. Instead of bullying, could you be a friend? Could you go ahead and actually reach out to that individual and really try to help them? You'll feel better about yourself. You'll feel more significant. But again, we all have choices to make when meeting these needs. And these are the things you have to become very comfortable with internally, but also externally too, when you're going ahead and you're communicating with the people that you're working with. Um, as far as the need for connection and love. Again, this is one, we all have that need. We all have a need to connect, build loving, lasting relationships with other individuals. Um, but love can be, you know, that's really a scary thing to a lot of people. You got, you got to step out of your comfort zone. You, you have, you're very uncertain as far as what's going to happen when you put yourself out there. Uh, so most people, because it becomes too scary, what a lot of people, not most people, but a lot of people will do, they'll, se they'll settle for connection. They'll connect with just about anybody just to have something, just have some connection. But they never, and that'll settle, satisfy the need to a certain extent. But that's why there's so many bad relationships out there is because basically that these people, they have that need for love and connection and they chose just to connect with them. Somebody have something, but they're never going to really be fulfilled in that. Um, you all hear the expression, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places. And it doesn't just apply to, you know, romantic you know, it, it applies to, to friendship. It, it, it applies to the, a sense of belonging to different groups, you know, rather be in the workplace or in a social activity um, with your peers, whatever the case may be. That's why people get into, you know, the wrong groups as far as they get into, why do you think youth problems we have today with so many kids in gangs? They're looking to belong. They're looking to, you know, to find love and connection. They're choosing the negative vehicle to meet that um and then when you like if you have somebody with a strong need for love and connection and at the same time they basically they have a need for significance well how do you get it how do you feel that need for significance well if you're in a gang not only you get the love and connection but you know violence you know violence you if you're violent with somebody you're you're, you're trust me you're going to become significant very quickly to that other individual but you're, again, you're meeting that need with a negative, a negative vehicle. Um, as far as growth, why do we have a need to grow? Well, I think that's somewhat self-explanatory. But if you think about it, the main reason we all have that need to grow, become more, 
Um, it's all about evolution. We all have a need to evolve. You know, if, if you're not green and growing, you're brown and dying. Uh, that's one of Tony Robbins' biggest saying, and, and I believe that, very true. But again, it's embedded in us as far as that need um, to evolve uh, from, from generations before us. It's, in, it's, it's embedded in, in, in deep inside of us. We all have that need to continuously be growing. But again, I can almost assure, assure you that if like myself, if, you, if one of your top values is to grow, and I believe everybody here has a, has a need, a very, they value the need to grow probably within the top three. Otherwise, I don't think you'd probably be here. But it's probably one of the top three that you value the most. But chances are, it's you. It's gonna. It's gonna be feeding into something else, maybe significance, uh, maybe a need for uh, certainty because you know that if you grow enough, that you can be certain. Whatever the case may be, growth typically, in my opinion, will always feed into um, another one of the six basic human needs. Sir. They're, they're usually tied to the hip um, with, you know, one, one of those others, but growth is definitely um, something that, you know, feeds like into significance or feeds into, um, you know, certainty. So, or it can even feed into love and connection because, you know, if you grow enough, well, you're, you're going to definitely be more appealing and you're going to have more opportunities to, you know, to connect with other uh, individuals. Um, so, but basically as, as Jim Rohn says, if you want to have more, you have to become more. That's what it comes down to as far as with growth. You know, if you want more in your life, if you want to have more in your relationships, higher level of uh, health and fitness, um, more money, you have to become more, you have to grow to go ahead and have that. And finally, number six, contribution a sense of contribution to serve. Um, we all have it. We all have a need to give something back. In my opinion, um, we all have that need for contribution. Um, but again, the reason we want to grow is so we have more to give. Uh, it's just embedded in us. You know, we all want to feel as if we're pulling our weight that, you know, well, I shouldn't say all of some people, they value it very low. Most people have a strong need to contribute, to feel as if they're pulling their weight, they're giving something back. Um, why growth and contribution are the most important uh, basic human needs. Again, to me, I really believe you, you basically, you grow so you can contribute simple as that um <clears throat> or again it's it's going to be tied to one of the others as well so now the big question what do you value most when you're going and you're primarily um looking at the six basic human needs this is the challenge i would have to you go away put them in order Start, you know, list them all out. Certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, growth, contribution. And then start to, you know your behaviors, you know how you, you respond, you know how you react to certain things. Go and, and see for yourself, which ones do you believe you value the most? You know, is it, are you like me? Do you value significance and maybe growth as your number one and two? Or maybe it's love and connection, uh, love and connection, and then maybe certainty underneath there. Uh, it could be any of them, because again, we, we, you have, every one of us have those six needs. The only difference will be is where do they rank for you? Your ranking, your your how much you value, chances are it'll be different than mine because you've had different experiences and you've been conditioned throughout your lifetime different than I have. But you still have those needs. 
But once you can identify what are the top one, two, and if you really want to get into it, maybe try three. But then what I want you to do is go and take a look at how you're meeting those needs. What vehicle are you choosing? Is it a positive vehicle or is it a negative vehicle that you're using um, to meet that need? Because once you can identify it and you can identify the vehicles, if you're not using a positive vehicle, awareness, remember how much we talk about awareness, you become very aware of what you're doing and then what we need to start doing or what you need to start doing is choosing different vehicles, positive vehicles to meet that need. So a lot of information covered there today, guys. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding to a certain extent about the six basic human needs. And again, the importance they play within our system, inside your own personal development and the personal development of the clients that you're working with. So other than that, as always, greatly appreciate everybody showing up today. Always love to do these sessions live. Um, questions, comments, concerns. I do have a seven o'clock that I have to jump on uh, now in two minutes. But if you send me a message, if you have, if you need to get together with me, I'm happy to do it after seven. Uh, give me about 45 minutes and I should be free. And I, I'm happy to jump on a call or whatever needs to be done, help anybody who needs help. Okay, other than that, guys, much appreciated. As always, have a great night and thanks for coming.